Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, it's quiet for the market. So let's uh, get discussing about the real estate space. Uh, let's put the spotlight on the real estate sector. According to property consultant Knight Frank India, there is a significant surge in the office space transactions across the top eight markets in India. Home sales have also surged by 9% year on year. To discuss this and more, we have Gulam Zia, who's the senior executive director at Knight Frank, who joins in. Uh, Gulam, hi, welcome to the show. Well, you just came out with this report, India Real Estate, the office and the residential report for the Jan to March quarter. And that's indicated that there's been a significant surge in office space transactions across the top eight markets, uh, marking, I think, around a 43% year-on-year growth, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's quite significant for the office space um, segment. Do you think that uh, that's probably because of a low base or is this trend here to stay? Uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting us to talk about this report. We have released just a short while back and focusing on commercial market. Yes, uh, 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 the trend has been the growth in last couple of years. In fact, after COVID, at least a year or so, there were serious concerns on how office market is going to look forward after the work from homes, etc. But last year, we saw one of the best uh, office market absorption, which was uh, the last calendar year, almost touching the pre-COVID levels. And this quarter is the highest quarter historically, with about 16 plus million square feet of office space absorbed in just one quarter. And especially quarter one is normally not as uh, good as the rest of the quarters, but this quarter itself has given the best of the performance. So overall, while growth is happening, Indian economy is growing, Indian facing businesses are growing, GCs are growing. So we don't see any reason why this year would not be historic best, much better than what we have seen last year or even for that matter, pre-COVID. So we are geared up for a year which would be historically best absor absorption numbers for office space. Right, so that's about the office space. I'm looking at all the other numbers that have come by as well for the first quarter. Residential, not doing too bad as well. 9% growth is what we've seen in the first quarter. But out here, what's interesting is that on an average, the growth has been a lot higher. It's been uh, skewed downwards by Bangalore. I'm looking at Mumbai's 17% growth in the first quarter. Um, we have a 14% growth in Pune, 15% growth in Hyderabad. Chennai too has grown in high single digits. The only two uh, geographies which have lowered the overall average, one is NCR, which has grown at just 1%. And the other one is Bengaluru, which has fallen by 2%. Can you tell us what happened here? Because... There was no uh, dearth of launches here either. Well, let me start with NCR. In NCR, something else, which is also there in those numbers that you are right now talking about. In NCR, the upper end of the market has doing exceptionally well. We're talking about, uh, uh, you know, one crore plus kind of transactions that we are tracking. About 66% of the transactions in NCR in the upper end, which meant that the lower end has not been performing. So when we look at uh, the lowest end, I'm talking about below 50 lakh kind of a ticket size, is one segment which has been suffering big time for various reasons, supply side concerns as well as demand side concerns. And if that had to perform, you know, there was no reason for uh, NCR also to do as good as the rest of them. So the here, simple as far as NCR is concerned, the premium market is absolutely going berserk. Large number of transactions are happening, but it's not good for the overall volume. That's on as far as the uh, NCR is concerned. Now, Bangalore, 2% of a reduction, I would once again say, let's not read too much into it. I would rather wait mm. and watch for a certain longish period because, uh, you know, uh, long-term weighted average and numbers are holding average about what we would look at. A 2% blip is not something which I would be too unduly worried about. Why, why a lot of them are trying to connect it to the water situation on ground, etc. But I would say hold back. It's not something to right now, right off that city for. Okay. What is your expectation in terms of growth in the residential market going into the remaining part of this year or FY25? Do you expect it to be as buoyant as FY24 or do you see any kind of headwinds? Well, uh, some the only concern I would talk about is uh, the election. Now, election itself may not have an adverse impact because historically we have seen earlier also immediately after an election the bounce back is phenomenal and that's what i would also look at 
but that said even now the kind of numbers that are coming we are watching month on month numbers like in case of mumbai we saw registration numbers were outstanding with almost about uh, you know uh, 90 or 1000 apartments sorry 16 or 1000 apartments sold etc these are numbers which are perhaps month on month uh, uh, improving and those numbers are still giving us another story which is the market is here to stay so the overall perspective in spite of uh, you know a possible concern due to election impacting the number of sales or volumes but long term we don't see much of a concern what i just short while back spoke about the low end of the market lower end of the market not performing well is the sole concern for me you know because while we spoke about ncr a short while back that while mm. premium upper end of the market is doing fabulously well it needs to be supported as far as numbers are concerned coming in from the mid to lower end of the market which remains a concern with which can change if the government brings in some kind of an incentive for right. the lower end with some uh, uh, rebate for the home loan interest rates home loan interest rate has impacted the lowest end the worst right. so overall concern is only that otherwise the market is looking good for the rest of the quarters Let's hope that comes comes about. Uh, we've seen signs of recovery at the lower end of uh, consumption from consumer staples, etc. If uh, you know this sustains going forward, maybe it moves higher at low ticket houses and all these others as well. Gulam, final question from my end before I uh, you we let you go. Uh, you've spoken about the top eight cities in India. Are there any other centers which are emerging as uh, real estate power houses where a lot of investment can go? Any early signs of some geographies which are emerging as big wealth creators or potential wealth creators out there and i also see chennai which has suddenly picked up uh, in terms of volume so the non traditional markets are doing well indeed first of all let me single out chennai chennai is not really a non traditional it has been traditionally okay. a very established market had suffered due to a few of those uh, natural calamities like tsunamis etc but now bouncing back now talking about the rest of them i would say lot of these centers are growing because of uh, wonderful infrastructure falling in place be it roads or airports etc etc so like recently we uh, we we have been talking about meerut meerut is one place because of high speed rail connectivity to delhi has been growing fabulously well similarly there are centers like even uh, due to the ram mandir opening the entire lucknow and uh, ayodhya belt is doing phenomenally well similarly there are a few other centers like in case of mysore the road is improving Mumbai Nagpur Expressway opened up, so a lot of those new places, new cities, which are finding a great uh, uh, momentum because of infrastructure improvement. Improvement. So I would say, let us focus on those cities where infrastructure is growing. Okay, just quickly before we let you go, Gulam, you know, I just wanted to narrow down on global capability centers, which have seen a surge in Hyderabad and Bangalore. Uh, are you seeing that trend continue as strongly as we have seen in FY twenty five? and has that resulted in a price appreciation as well positively the price let us start about positive the, the price trend you know what is gcc gcc are the very upper end of the outsourcing global capability centers when many of these banks nbfcs and big corporates are setting up their own research centers for their own internal requirements that is what gcc is all about and that requires retention of very high end of resources and then it is not just salary or packages or cost to company it's also a lot to do about the real estate the 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 quality of the offices that you are providing to your people and that's where the the rents have also started going up the gccs and then about regions bangalore and hyderabad you have best of the resources to do high end research and that's where it is starting but it is obviously spreading into other cities like chennai pune even pune is getting lot of focus from gcc so rest of the the cities of the country will also not lag behind but as you rightly said started with hyderabad we started with bangalore now in chennai uh, in hyderabad so this is something which will give an impact on overall price improvement as well the rental rise also will happen because of gcc spread in times to come Okay all right uh, Gulam we're we going to let you go on that note thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us and talking about the real estate market and also giving us details about the office market uh, which we generally don't talk about as much well uh, we'll take a short break but we have an an announcement to share with you all before that we're launching CNBC TV 18's first ever live personal finance webinar CNBC TV 18 accelerate personal finance handbook with Sonia Shinoy where she will be joined by three well known experts On Saturday, 11th May, 9 a.m. onwards, we'll be diving into everything you need to know to master your finances and learn how to grow your wealth. Be it 
insurance, tax saving, managing your portfolio, retirement planning, there's a lot to learn and lots to do. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s or even 40s, this live web webinar is for you. We have limited seats, so don't miss this chance. Register now. Scan the QR code to register or log on to cnbctv18.com and we'll see you on the 11th of May.